Hi everyone, I'm Pastor Megan from Coral Gables Congregational United Church of Christ and welcome to Storytime. Even though we can't be together because of the coronavirus and we need to physically be separated from one another, there are great stories in our Bible that can bring us together and stories that make us think and ask questions about how we relate to each other and how we can become better people. Jesus used stories called parables. And today I wanted to talk to you about three of those parables, read you this book called Who Counts? 100 Sheep, 10 Coins, and Two Sons. These are three parables or teaching stories or stories that make us question about ourselves that Jesus used in the Gospel according to Luke chapter 15. This is a special book to me, not only because it tells these parables to you, but because it's written by someone that I know. Dr. Amy Jill Levine was here at our church and she talked to our parents and um, gave a sermon all about God. She's a professor at a college in Tennessee. And then there's another woman who helped her write it or they co-wrote it together, Sandy Eisenberg Sasso. She's a rabbi and she we have used some of her curricula here at sunday school for us to learn from there's also beautiful pictures in this book illustrated by a woman named margo meganek almost sounds like pastor megan right so here we go enjoy this book with me who counts 100 sheep 10 coins and two sons 100 sheep, 100 sheep. If just a single one were lost, who would notice? Who counted sheep anyway? The man did. The man had a lot of sheep, 100 of them. He counted them every day. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And he kept counting 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. It took time to count a long time. One day the man counted 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, and then he stopped. There were only 99. He must have made a mistake. He had 100 sheep, not 99. He counted them again. Still, there were only 99. One of his sheep was missing. He was responsible for all the sheep, all 100 of them. Immediately the man went to look for the lost sheep. He walked and he walked, but he saw nothing. He kept walking. He looked to his left and saw nothing. What's over here? He's at the edge of a cliff, but do you see anything here? He looked to his right, nothing. He walked and then he listened, still nothing. Then he heard a bleeding sound. Bah, bah. He ran toward the sound and there she was, the lost sheep. He had found her. He looks very happy. She was too tired to follow him home. So he lifted her on his shoulders and carried her. She must be very heavy. He was so happy to have all his sheep together that he invited everyone to celebrate with him. Some people said, what's so wonderful? It was only one sheep. You had 99 others. The man smiled. One sheep makes a difference. Without her, something is missing. Now my flock is complete. 
Here's our second parable or story about counting. This one's called 10 coins. And the woman in this story is counting coins called drachma. That's the name of the coins. 10 drachma, 10 silver coins. Every day, the woman would count them. One day, she counted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. She stopped. She couldn't have made a mistake, but she counted them again anyway. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Still, she counted only nine. One drachma was missing. She had lost one of her coins. She has a sheep piggy bank for her coins from the other story, right? The sheep is here. The woman lit a lamp to see more clearly. She looked under the chair and in the corners. No coin. Help me look at this picture. She has a flashlight and she's on her knees. She's looking under the chair. But I see something back over here under the cabinet. What do you think it is? Let's see. She looked in the cabinets and in the wastebasket. Still no drachma. She took a broom and she swept the floor. There were crumbs and there was dust, but no coin. It was her fault. She had lost the coin and now she must find it. She searched again with the light and with the broom. So here she is sweeping, 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 and as she sweeps, finally she saw something shining and heard a ping sound. She looked down and there was the missing coin. It's right over here. There's that cheap piggy bank again. She held the coin in her hand for a few moments and then she carefully placed it with the other drachma. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. She was so happy to have all the coins that she invited the women in the town to celebrate. Some people said, why so important? It was only one coin. The woman smiled. Just one coin matters. Without it, something is missing. Now my coined collection is complete. Our final story today, our final parable that Jesus told is called Two Sons. A father had two sons, easier to count than 10, much easier to count than 100. One day, the younger son wanted half his father's money. It would be his eventually, but he could not wait. He was restless and he wanted to travel and see the world. So the father divided his wealth in half and gave half to his younger son and half to his older son. Look how fancy he is now. The younger son went to a foreign land. There he had a great time doing whatever he wanted. Look at him, let's see him in this page. He has a suitcase, he has on a pair of jeans and a shirt. When he traveled with all that money from his dad, look what he has, a brand new suit, a red tie and red shoes. He looks all fancy. But before long, he had spent all of the money and had none left, not even enough to pay for food. There was no one to share even a crumb of bread with him, and there was little food in the land. He's looking into the shop window, and the shelves are all empty, kind of like some they, sometimes they are now, right? We're missing some things on our food shelves because of the coronavirus. The son went to work for a farmer to try to earn enough to buy something to eat. The farmer told him to go and feed the pigs. 
Look at him now. Even the pods that the pigs ate looked good to him. That's how hungry he was. Finally, the son was so hungry and so tired that he decided to return to his father's house. But he wasn't sure what to say. How could he tell his father that he had spent all the money? His good pants were torn. His shirt was stained. His fancy shoes had holes. He thought, I will tell my father that I made a big mistake. I will say that I'm sorry. I will offer to work hard to earn money. The young son returned home. His hair was uncombed, his face was dirty, and his hands were covered with blisters because he was working so hard. Who's that? Is that the dad? His father ran to greet him. He was so happy to see him that he did not care about anything else. He's running out with his arms wide open from the house, right? Instead of making his son earn money for clothing and food, he gave him a new coat, new shoes, and even a new ring. He looks a lot different now. Then he invited everyone to his home to celebrate. The dad's running through the village with a bell, ringing it, inviting all the neighbors and friends to come. And if you look carefully in this window, you'll see that little sheep. The older son was still working in the field when he heard happy sounds of singing and laughter and smelled sweet spices coming from his home. He wondered what was happening. He stopped one of the neighbors who was heading to his house and asked, what is going on? The neighbor was surprised by the question. Don't you know that your father is making a big party for your brother to mark his return? The older brother didn't know. There's some sheep back over there next to the house. When the father counted everyone who had come to the party, he realized that one person was missing. That person was his older son. He had forgotten to invite him. He ran out of his house to find his son. When the older son saw his father coming toward him, he turned away. He was sad and angry that no one had come to find him. His father spoke softly. Your brother has come home. I invited all our friends to celebrate with us. You must come and be glad with us. He tried to hug his son, but his son folded his arms across his chest. The older son finally said to his father, I have been with you all the years that my brother has been away. I did not waste your money. I did everything you wanted me to do. I never left you, but my brother did. Then you make a big party for him. You never had one for me. You didn't even invite me to his party. The father thought, I have two sons. One, two. I paid attention to my younger son, but I discounted my older son. I didn't realize that he felt lost. The father took his older son's hands in his own. Please come and join the party. I love you. All I have is yours. Come and be with me and with your brother. 
I have two sons. He counted one and pointed to the house where the younger son was celebrating. He counted two and he put his arms around his older son. Without you, he said, something is missing. With you, our family is complete. That's the end of our book for today. Think about how you feel. How you feel if you had something that you lost. How you feel when you find something. And think about how you could be a better caring person. Like that father who had forgotten his older son or didn't pay attention or took him for granted. Sometimes we do that to our parents and to our brothers and our sisters. And it's nice to just tell them sometimes that we love them and that we care for them. Thank you for joining me today. See you next time.